I guess the next thing that I would like to discuss is the state of journalism um, and uh, particularly whistleblowing in this time. I want to point to Julian Assange, at least at first, uh, and get your, your thoughts on what's currently unfolding with him. Uh, he is now in uh, Belmarsh Prison. He's in Belmarsh Prison in London. He's been there since April, since he was forcefully removed from the Ecuadorian embassy and the asylum that he had there. Um, there was recently a report that came out where he was in court. Um, the report says that he was fighting back tears. He said he couldn't think properly. He couldn't understand the court proceedings. He had a hard time even recalling, I think, his own name, uh, uh, the date even. Um what do you make of this case and and not just of him but also how the media has in a general sense the the US media in particular has covered what's happening to Assange and WikiLeaks and whistleblowing in general US media and the British media as well uh, Assange is basically being murdered by the British government he's held I mean his uh, uh, being sequestered in the uh, Ecuadorian embassy that uh, was bad enough. Uh, the embassy, incidentally, I visited him there as a kind of like a small apartment. Uh, he was basically stuck in a couple, in one or two rooms, couldn't even. I mean, in many ways, it's worse than being in prison. At least prisoners are allowed to go into the yard and see the sun. He couldn't go out. It was plainly uh, psychologically very difficult. It would be for anyone. Uh, now they've, after the right-wing government in Ecuador expelled him, uh, he was taken over by the British. He's in a, a high-security prison uh, under uh, uh, very harsh conditions. Uh, all of this for the crime of skipping bail. You know, usually you get a, a, a fine for that. At, and his treatment, the pe people who've seen him at that court scene that you mentioned and have visited him and say that his, his health is sharply deteriorating and uh, he's being treated in a way which is basically destroying him. Uh, there is an extradition hearing coming up. Uh, I, how it'll turn out, I you don't know. The British will probably extradite him to the United States where he'll be tried with uh, crimes that uh, even as theoretically can yield, lead to the death sentence, uh, but he's already uh, practically suffering. It. And uh, as for the media, they're uh, simply uh, supporting this, or either not reporting it or saying, yeah, it's the right thing, because he's a hideous criminal who revealed to the world uh, things that the US government doesn't want populations to know, should be regarded as, uh, meanwhile, the same media, uh, eagerly uh, exploit the revelations that come out from the uh, WikiLeaks. So that's that's basically what I have to say about Assange. Um, is there any legal precedent to this, though? I mean, I, I feel like what's happening is extra extra legal, as in this is not uh, something that's been. It's like I think that what they're doing seems to be outside of the bounds of international law. Is that true? Or is this something that can be seen as a precedent? Is there something we can look to in the past as being an example of what they're doing today? It's probably not technical. I mean, there are, you know, it's uh, the UN rapporteur on torture uh, has described it as in violation of uh, conventions on uh, torture and uh, uh, and uh, treatment of prisoners, but whether that's violation of international law, you could debate. Uh, however, talking about international law is a, a bit of a joke. I mean, there are gross violations of international law uh, that nobody even mentions. Uh, so uh, in this century, uh, the uh, most extreme violation of international law was the uh, US-UK invasion of, of Iraq. That's a textbook example of aggression with no credible pretext. It's what uh, 
the Nuremberg Tribunal and general international law regard as the supreme international crime, uh, differing from other war crimes in that it encompasses the totality of what happens uh, uh, then and afterwards, would include uh, the uh, creation of uh, the breakup of Iraq, the killing of hundreds of thousands of people, uh, millions of refugees, uh, inciting ethnic conflicts, which have spread tearing the whole region apart, uh, leading to the birth of ISIS and so on. Uh, that's an extraordinary international crime. Has anybody said anything about it? Mm. Yeah, no. International law is for the weak. Mm. Okay. Um, and so, I mean, this really comes back to the threat, What are the implications of what this court case is, this extradition hearing for Assange. What is this, do you think? Do you think the, the long-term implications of this, as far as our ability to have whistleblowers, uh, the kind of the kind of information that journalists are able to use uh, in general. I mean, that's kind of one of the fears about re whether or not you love or or hate Assange as a person and what he may have done personally uh, as a publisher of this uh, information. The real fear is that it's going to have a real impact on the freedom of press. Uh, do you get that sense, or is that already long gone? Are we way past that point? I'm afraid it's it's another case and an extreme case of the use of state power, uh, the U.S. in the background, but Britain is the is the country that's uh, implementing it. Uh, use of state power to uh, prevent to punish uh, the release to the public of information that power systems don't want them to have. Mm -hmm. That's basically what it amounts to. Okay. And yes, that's certainly a message to uh, uh, journalists everywhere. And uh, not that it's new. It's by no means the first time, even though, or even the most extreme. You know, after all, uh, uh, people have been uh, deported, uh, imprisoned, uh, all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. Okay. So is this? A, I guess. I guess just to point to this. I mean, is this a? To you, is this an indication that we are past a point where real substantial journalism is being thoroughly undermined and threatened? I mean, I, I really think about what it means to be a journalist in an authoritarian state um, and what the you know real risks that come with doing real journalism is right now, you know? Um, it's It's rather bleak, I guess, and I just wanted to get your sense of what <laughs> what people who are getting into journalism right now, what they can really expect and what they're coming up against. Well, you know, it's, uh, I wouldn't say it's crossed the border. We've been through much worse in the past. So uh, take Woodrow Wilson's Red Scare, uh, 1990, the, the, right, after, right after the First World War. I mean, about thousands of people were deported. The independent press was virtually crushed. Uh, uh, it, uh, you know, it was a massive attack on human rights. The so-called McCarthy period uh, uh, was, was about the same. The Trump period is uh, innovating in a way which is familiar from totalitarian states. The entire uh, system in the United States under Trump is becoming a kind of uh, proto-fascism without the ideology, uh, just the uh, pertinences of fascism. Uh, one of those is to totally destroy the information system so that the concept of truth, uh, fact, uh, accuracy just fades into oblivion. And the way they're doing it is just by flooding the information system with uh, fakery. Uh, lot, perfectly conscious, uh, lying, deceit uh, on every imaginable topic, uh, uh, trivial or important, uh, to the point where people just uh, are, are kind of have to sort of abandon uh, the effort to try to find out what's true or false. Of course, you can still do it if you work at it, but for much of the population, it means that the 
whole concept of uh, accuracy, truth, uh, uh, fact, and so on kind of dissolves. Now that's a very uh, uh, effective way of uh, undermining uh, public uh, engagement in uh, any uh, of the uh, decisions that matter in the world. In other words, it's destroying democratic function. And uh, Trump is a master at it. It's working very well. He's, uh, he's got a kind of an adoring constituency uh, for whom he can do, do no wrong. Uh, facts are what he says. Uh, uh, there may be around 40% of the population or more. Very solid base. The Republican Party uh, is terrified of that base. Will not, won't do anything to cross Trump. He's their god. Uh, some sectors of it, like uh, evangelicals, who are a big uh, segment of the population in the United States, are almost totally in line in support of their hero and so on. But th this is, it's, it's wrong to describe this as fascism. It gives it too much credit. It has basically no ideology behind it. The ideology for Trump is just me, you know, whatever's important. But it has some of the features of uh, totalitarian systems and uh, undermining the media and uh, creating the uh, uh, anger, uh, 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 distrust uh, uh, regarding the uh, media as some kind of enemy. Uh, that's uh, a good way to uh, undermine democratic function.